welcome. My name is Joy D. Fanning, an astronaut of life. I help spiritual seekers go inward to explore through meditation. And I'm also expanding this into writing. I'm starting three new groups, meditation, book club, and a writing group. And this video is going to focus on the book we are going to read for our book club, The Convoluted Universe by Dolores Cannon. I've only read the first three chapters, which is part one. Every week, I plan to make a video on the next part and just kind of give a little brief overview of what this book is about. Dolores Cannon is a name I have heard for several years now, but I never bothered to read her stuff. And a lot of people talk about it. A lot of the core concepts in spirituality, I think, either come from her work or are solidified in her work. So if you've never checked her out, I will link um, her YouTube below. She has since passed away, but whew, lots of info, lots of interesting things. Apparently, even though this is book one, the Convoluted Universe series, in the introduction, she mentions another book, which you should start with. I didn't. I'm just putting that out there. But this book is very easy to get. You can get it on Amazon. I bought it on Apple Books for $10, and I believe the Kindle version is $10. So it's not expensive, easy to get, and it's so far, it's easy to read. I am understanding everything. I think if I was starting to read this book brand new into spirituality, it holds some concepts and things that would take me a little bit to get used to, but I would still find it very interesting. So going to peek at my notes now and just kind of give you a little bit of an overview of what these first three chapters entail. So in chapter one, Dolores introduces us to herself, to her work. She's a hypnotherapist focusing on past lives. And what she does is she puts people in a hypnotic state, deep in the trance, talks to, brings up a past life, talks to them about it. And from my understanding, when they go in this trance, they are talking to her from the mind of the person in that past life. So the main one she's working with right now is a woman named Linda, who in a past life was a man named Bartholomew. And so when Dolores is talking to Bartholomew, um, he's from the Middle Ages, so his understanding is from that period. So she, she doesn't tell him about airplanes or cell phones or any of this. She keeps it at his level. But Bartholomew is very interesting. Um, to just give you a little bit of background, he was a prince of some nation that was never really dis, you know, discussed. Um, he was one of the younger princes, so he wasn't in, in line to the throne. He could kind of be his own man, which was a very unique position, especially in the Middle Ages, right? And what he actually chose to do was when he came of age, he left and just traveled and what's super cool about Bartholomew is while he was still prince, he was visited by a Pleiadian who just kind of showed up as an old man and would just teach him things. And so at first, um, Dolores is talking to Bartholomew. I struggle with that name. <laughs> and, you know, kind of learning about his history, learning who he is trying to get some info on this old Pleiadian guy, what knowledge he's giving Bartholomew. And Bartholomew is like, well, I'm tasked with finding a prodigy and conveying this information to them. So through several sessions, Dolores walks um, into Bartholomew's life 
And eventually he's at the ripe old age and seeing 333 on the clock, super cool. He's at the ripe old age of like 60 something, we'll say 65. I don't have it written in my notes. And he's like in his Merkaba or some type of spaceship. And it's like right before he dies, he's not dead. He's in a human body and he's traveling through space. And they're like, wow. And he's actually going into another dimension where he meets these little beings who have big heads. They're made of light and they have small arms and there's a lot of them. They call it the colony. Yeah, they're non-physical. Let's see. And they just ask Bartholomew all these questions about Earth. And so the next, like chapter two is about what questions they're asking. And it's a lot about the history of Earth from a spiritual perspective, which is pretty cool. So it talks about these, how the earth, what it was created for, its initial purpose, how it veered off that path when humans came around. And then these other beings came to kind of help the humans. Some beings helped, some beings succumbed to negativity and kind of brought the whole I am God, you are a lower vibe into humanity. While others came as animals, just trying to telepathically work with humans. And yeah, it just keeps going on and on about all these questions. I'm not going to go too far into it because obviously I want you to read the book and learn it for yourself. This is a cool point. Before humans came to Earth, Earth was a vacation spot for souls they were not meant to stay here long as being in this dualistic physical state is a little, is it like addictive is that's my interpretation of it. This also was a very interesting fact I made to write. I wanted to write down. It was a long while before shades of skin occurred and they occurred from different sects of humans intermingling with alien races. So in the very beginning, like, long time ago long long time ago um according to this you know like humans aliens would come some to teach us some to observe some to collect minerals or things the earth had and they would intermingle goal with us and this is how we have different shades of skin i have some spots of blank skin <laughs> Uh, they also taught us agriculture, husbandry of animals, and this was like the third group of aliens that came to try to teach us. That's what they did. They did not succumb to the heavy energy. And when we get to chapter three, we learn a little bit more about these ancient aliens that came to help us. And they talk about, this gets like pretty far out there. I hope I put this in the description box too, but I'm just going to say it right now. Like, I'm not saying this is true or false. I'm really just trying to be an objective observer here. And like I said, you're going to hear the name Dolores Cannon at some point if you're in the spiritual community. And I've been on this path for oh, like four years now. So I'm just now getting into it. So don't judge yourself if you're like me and it's been a while and you still haven't read it. it. doesn't, to me, it doesn't matter when. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. That That is always, always, always the key, right? I'm just saying this is what she talks about in the book. And if you find it interesting, by all means, go grab your own copy, read it. And if you really want to dig, dive deep, come to the Zoom group book club meeting we're going to have at the end of October and let's hash this out and talk about it. In chapter three, when she's talking about Bartholomew's still talking about these aliens that came to help humanity. And he said that they brought like these metal discs or something, devices, devices. 
and they were different shapes. And one was to collect energy from the sun and it had to be done in a certain way. And only like priests and other high knowledge people got to know how to do it. And then they could use this energy. It like took the sun's energy and put it in like a battery or something. And they could use it for all sorts of things for like moving big things, light, you name it. And then there was one for the moon that would capture moonlight and that device was used for healing and like reju rejuvenating human cells and things. I found that very curious because I know like my understanding, at least scientifically, is that moonlight is just sunlight reflected from the moon. But then if you add in energy, I mean, you have the energy of the moon coming off of that sunlight. So I guess that makes sense, right? Also in chapter three, there's this mention of a council, which is located in another plane of existence, which controls who to come, who can come to earth and why. I believe this is like, um, well, now I can't even think of the name, but again, if you're in this community, especially like star seed stuff, you're going to hear about a council a lot. And Dolores mentions like she hears a lot of clients in these past lives talk about a council. So I'm sure we'll learn more about this council. And then it goes back to those little light beings that Bartholomew is teaching all this stuff to, which they are his prodigy. And he says that their task, they are special types of souls from source, which source is God. And God made these little light being souls different from human souls and their job is to simply come to earth and enter humans and they can enter up to like 10 humans at a time and they're just there to to elevate that person's energy and they do not impose on free will at all so there's no imposing on free will they're just there to lighten the energy and elevate it so humans can be more in tune with spiritual stuff. So here's what the book looks like. If, yeah, you can judge me if you want about what I read, but that's okay. So here's my notes. So we're in the book. Let's just read this whole paragraph. I sighed, thinking the regression would probably turn out to be a simple, mundane past life of no importance other than her. So as you can tell, this is in chapter one, and this is talking about her first session with Linda. And she was just like, I don't think anything important is going to come of this, but I promised her a session, so we're just going to do it. She conducted many others, wasn't really in the mood. I was recovering from a sore throat, blah, blah, blah. As we began, I was expecting absolutely nothing and was soon pleasantly surprised and taken completely off guard. It was another example of going into something with no expectations and discovering the stage was being set for forces beyond my control. I feel like I highlighted this because, I mean, how often does that happen in our own lives, right? I mean, I, I could write a whole freaking list, you guys. How many times I'm like, I don't know about this. You know, is this even going to happen? Is it going to work? You know, like watch my freaking meeting my twin flame video. That's like chock full of it, right? It just, I also like this because Dolores is just being real. Like she's tired. She's done a lot of sessions. She's not in the mood. And isn't that when that like shit happens? Like, have you noticed that? Like, it's not always when we're the brightest and the happiest and the most energetic, like cool things happen, even when we're not in the mood. Cool thing to remember. Okay. So this is what it looks like when she's talking about a session. So this is the colony that B Bartholomew is being taken to with these little light people. So let's read, they call it the colony. It is a new experimental place where they are hoping pure truth will pervade and not be distorted in any manner. These people are of a pure heart and mind. 
I will be their teacher. This is Bartholomew talking through Linda. I will give them the knowledge I have accumulated over these very many years. They will be the keepers of this knowledge. Because of their purity, they will not misuse, hoard, or color it in any way, shape, or form. They will be the keepers of the knowledge of the universal truth. I think this is really cool about these little light people because like, I don't know. I, I just, I love that purity, that innocence, that universal truth. I love it all. I really hope one of them's entered me, you know, I'm down with that. So here's the question Dolores asked, what were these space beings so why were these space beings so concerned? Couldn't they just go away and forget about Earth? So this is talking about all these different alien groups that want to support Earth and help humanity and Earth in general. And Bartholomew, speaking through Linda, says no, because there was a master plan for this Earth. It is the most beautiful planet in the universe. It was designed in beauty as an experiment. Unfortunately, it never evolved in the way it was designed. It was to be an experiment in emotional and physical pleasures, things that many other places do not have. It was designed to be an experience for those who came here and then to leave. People would come here on holiday to experience the earth the pleasures that it would give, physical pleasures that the beings would normally not experience. So that was the original intention of Earth to just be, I've heard several stories. I don't even know where, where like Earth was like a zoo and just this Garden of Eden, the whole planet was a Garden of Eden. People and places could come here and just be in it. And it kind of follows that line of thinking, um, right? To me, it does. So that's kind of like my many, many, I don't know how many minutes we've been going, but like my mini summary of the first three chapters. It's just kind of diving in straight on into all of this and just looking at the different sections when I was planning out my videos and like matching it with the book like it is going to get intense and I'm really excited um so if this is like what you know what remember the whole take what resonates leave what doesn't I strongly suggest that I would love 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 let me you know what let's just do it so this is my website if you come here Either click on groups or up at the top, it's gonna say group list. If you want to join the book club right here, you guys, is where you're gonna find all the information about this book club where we're gonna meet. I would really encourage you to just join, share something. The Zoom link's right here. And we're really gonna dive deep and talk about this, okay? So come join me. I would love, love, love to hear you talk about it. It's going to be on Wednesday, October 26th at 5 p.m. Central Time. I'd love to have you there. I'm gonna make a video of this every week just talking about these new chapters I'm reading. So if you feel like you can't make the group or don't want to or whatever have you, A-okay. Hope you enjoy these videos. I love you all.